Nisha Arena, and you're listening to Unapologetic. I think there is so much complexity, and it's a space that we tread lightly in because the repercussions. Uh, part of the conversation gets lost when um, the knee-jerk response is that someone's being anti-Semitic when there is a uh, criticism or a critical analysis of Israel, not of Israel as the people or Israel connected to faith, but Israel as a state. Like when we talk about the state, um, when I talk about the state here, state sanctioned violence, I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about the systems and institutions. I think what winds up happening, because even in your religious space and the things that you're connected to, they're still entrenched with white supremacy, that culture of dominance and superiority. And the faith thing becomes the cover because supremacy always has a cover. It's like, well, over here, people will say, oh, but the Bible says it's like, oh, you're being anti-Semitic. I'm being persecuted because I'm Jewish. It's like, no, 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 no. It's connected to the state, the state-sanctioned violence. Like, I'm not cool with that for anybody. And we get tripped up. And it's the consistent pattern. Like I was, I was saying before we started recording, there's somebody that um, I've been seeing on uh, Twitter. And uh, what she was saying is that Jewish folks right now are triggered in like the historic traumatic things that they've gone through. I can understand that. There is this asking for the extension of empathy for their humanity in that regard. And that circles back to whiteness and supremacy because whose humanity gets to be seen and honored in that regard? I don't wanna do oppression Olympics, right? If um, Jewish folks can have this historic trauma and ancestral memory. Black folks can have that too. Um, and when asking for our humanity to be seen, that is something that it's like, nope, you don't get that. You don't get to have, you know, empathy for these situations where you're being harmed by state sanctioned violence on a daily. I think what happens in whiteness too, when you experience an oppression and one of the identities that you hold because you are uh, never just one thing where intersectional people, you can have an oppression, be oppressed and also be oppressive. You can become an oppressor. That's not okay because you cannot get rid of oppression by being oppressive. And that then brings us to the space of how do you have reconciliation? How do you have justice? How do you have peace? You can't have justice without truth. Then that will circle us back to history. How did the state of Israel come to exist? Well, we got to go on back to the white supremacy culture. Like we had this war about religion, faith, and ethnic cleansing, genocide kind of thing. And it's, okay, how do we make this better? Oh, we're going to give you this land over here, which oh, by the way, it isn't even ours to give. And there were people that already lived there. Why that piece of land? Who lived there? Oh, it was the brown people. Because, you know, we can't give away a piece of Germany because, well, the white people. And you see this thing, like it does become racialized in that way. In a white supremacist society, whiteness is the thing. And it's not about your color. It's this social contract of horrible things that you'll do to uphold it, which looks like, yo, I'll kill the babies. that. Even people that look like me, I killed them too. For the contract of whiteness, for that perceived power, privilege, protection, I will build walls around you and put you in an air prison. Whiteness. And it's not about faith. Right? History. Colin is like, it's not lost on me that this popped off at a time where we're over here talking about colonization and the celebration of a colonizer. Like it was indigenous people's day. 
what happened here? Oh, we found some land and whatever, but the people were here, they were savages and they did these things. It's like the rhetoric has not changed. We just cycle it back around. That is how white supremacy continues to perpetuate all of its stuff. Cause we just will do it. We'll say, yeah, these folks are savages and we got to, you know, bring them to Christianity or whatever the thing is, to make them civilized. And therefore we have the right to take the land, kill the people, do all the things. Oh, I don't have to answer to you. I can gaslight you and say, that's really not what it is. Or, oh no, it's that thing. On repeat, since the beginning in a culture of superiority. I am better than you because I'm the chosen one. I'm better than you because I'm white. I'm better than you because I'm rich. I'm better than you because I'm able-bodied. I'm better than you because I'm straight. I'm better than you because I'm cisgender. And therefore, if you say something out like, you do something out like, hell, you just exist. I have the right to belittle you, to harm you, to, to kill you. And I don't even have to answer to you. These things are rooted in our history. It's, it's documented and we wind up fighting against each other, right? Instead of actually coming together and, and healing all the deep wounds that come from this singular place. How can Palestinians, Israeli come together, right? It, like how, is there a way that that's possible? to share land, to know that, hey, we are one. Like, what sense does it make to, to blow up each other and, and to have nothing in the quest for superiority? I don't get that part. And that's from uh, just humanity. Like, think about climate change, like our, our ability to exist on this rock like the way that we choose to function like it, it's not going to matter like th there's not going to be a planet i got grandbabies this can't be what they inherit like will there be something for them to inherit will this land be hospitable i don't want to see anybody's babies die like these are people's kids Palestinians, ju 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 like, but state sanctioned violence, this way of being is harming all of us. We can't even hold each other in that collective pain. And we have all experienced it and will continue to experience it unless we eradicate this space of dominance and superiority, this supremacy culture, all of the things that it asks of us to do. I will destroy you in the name of being superior. Even if someone has tried to destroy me under the guise of being superior, you can be oppressed and be an oppressor and also trying to dismantle oppressive systems at the same time on the same day. How do we reckon that? How, how do we reconcile that and not, demonize someone for having a critique of state sanctioned violence that's the thing here like if you criticize this country you're you're not patriotic and james baldwin said like i love this country i have the right to criticize her because i expect her to be better we have the right to critique right let america be america again langston hughes like can we can we do that right that's that's our United States stuff here, but again, colonized nations, right? I live in a colonized nation. Palestine, this little strip, colonized. That, that's what that is. It started out that way from a war. Hey, we're going to take this, we're going to do this, displace people, right? Under-resource the community. And this is the thing, under-resource communities create the conditions that are ripe for violence, here and abroad, people don't have their most basic needs. And violence does not solve the problems that violence creates. And at the same time, what do you do under those extreme conditions? And this is not because someone is Jewish. 
it is because there is state sanctioned violence against people, human beings. I live in a country that supports that violence. It was part of the creation of the state of Israel, the state. And the state of the people, Palestine, is one of being historically harmed. That's what I'm saying.